Vehicles 24. Shall the town of Hampton wrote, vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 350000 for the purchase of the following replacement vehicles? The Department of Public Works. One one-ton truck with a dump body and a plow. One sidearm packer. Be replaced of the vehicles traded to the, with the, the replaced vehicles being traded if deemed prudent by the Public Works Director, Town Manager, and the Board of Selectmen. This is a non-lapsing appropriation and shall not be lapsed until the purchase is completed or by March 31st, 2018, which is a bit sooner. So I think that's a that's a, a neutral appropriation. It's the same as this year in round figures. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have a motion and second it for discussion. I'll make the motion to All right. Second. Yes, sir. Have some discussion. What you're looking to replace and why you're. You want to go? You want to do? Well, this falls the CIP plan that we put together. Um, just trying to follow the, the wording as you. So we have one one ten. It. Right. Um, one real loaded packer uh, replacement of. Our yard horse, for those that don't know, no. the yard horse was dropped on yours because it was on ours. Yeah, we have it here. Basically, the two that are on here, yeah, this one got changed. Okay, this one got over. Oops, we lost one of my pages. Okay. The one sidearm packer came up as the vehicle to replace because we've been facing, and I think we brought this up at the last selectmen's meeting, significant challenges um, with the maintenance of these vehicles. Uh, it, to the extent that we still have one vehicle down that's now been down almost, what, three weeks? Correct. Um, and, and we just, we can't be without a vehicle. We can't be without that trash truck. It takes twice as many people to put them on the rear loader. Um, our demand is increasing. Uh, so the need is there for one of the sidearm packers. The article that we, uh, what was the word we, We'll talk about later the one yep. that uh, when Chris had stepped out, mm -hmm. that has this one arm packer in it. So that was why, you know, it was sort of like let's talk about this or let's talk about the other article. Um, overall, it's a, a solid waste issue uh, for the one arm packer. It's not just this one arm packer in here. It's all. It, you know, we need trailers for the storing right. of the refuge to be able to haul it up. Um, the one ton truck is to replace, you know, one of our oldest in the fleet. Um, and as you know, I'm working on the solid waste study, as I, I explained to uh, the manager a number of weeks ago. One of the phases of that was to back up and look at what, what has it cost us over the last five years. I believe I broached that subject when I was here for my uh, quarterly report, that those three trucks over the last five years have, have cost the department uh, to, in excess of two hundred thousand dollars just for maintenance. These three vehicles. These th the three one arm packers, and that's why there is. A, there, that's why this particular article has been amended from previous year's CIPs to move one of those vehicles into uh, replacement now, because we're gonna. We're just exceeding our budget. Uh, by comparison, the 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 rear packers, the ones we literally put the trash in on the, the, the rear end of the vehicles, the five-year maintenance pat pattern on those was uh, in the area of 100000 So it's almost a two-to-one maintenance-wise uh, for these sidearm packers. They're very, while they are very efficient on the road and they don't uh, require the need of other people, i.e. workers on the backside to move the carts, uh, they are very expensive vehicles to so um, at present, vehicle 92, is, as we said, have been down for three weeks. Um, we're able to use um, our other trucks plus taking away two guys out of highway so we can run a rear packer, uh, able to collect our refuse every day. But the, what this particular truck's in for is a six to $7,000 um, re rebuild of the gas uh, regeneration. regeneration system. For those that don't know, uh, it actually captures the, uh, the soot, the black gas that you'd see in a diesel, and sends it back for a reburn 
through the uh, through the uh, engine. A part of it, it has to be cooled a little bit, and then before it can be reburned. And that those systems on these trucks are very um, they're costly to maintain. As I said before, we didn't pick the right truck five years ago. These trucks should have been short haul, like over the road where they're running 40 miles to a place and 50 miles to another place on a daily basis instead of stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. Because it's, it's the engines, it's, this is not what they were built for. Well, the, the point, the, it, it's not our, just our problem. It's any of the trucks that were made with that type of regeneration system. Right. They don't yeah. use that anymore. Right. It's a 2007 International. They, they, don't, they use don't use that anymore because it failed because you have to have that truck get out on the road and burn. Yeah. For, and these don't. Matter of fact, the first one that went down when we called the repair shop, they said, we described the problem. They said, oh, you must have a 2007 International. And we said, well, yeah, how did you know? They've all had to been rebuilt. Oh, okay. So, because if you can't get it out on the road to burn that off, what happens is the system gets clogged, and then you have to do that. And they, Owning one, uh, a, a diesel that's that vintage, I know exactly what it is. <laughs> okay. yeah, so can you modify the truck so it doesn't do that? Or no? Put it in a new engine. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have to repower it. And, the, and it's been a, um, what do you call it, dominoes effect. The first time we go in and replace, you know, the, the regulating valve, the next thing is the filter, and the next thing after the filter is the um, joint that's holding it together, and then times it by three because we have three of these trucks. So we're just finding in the last, you know, five how months. We, how we discovered it is when we did an oil change, we realized we had uh, radiator fluid in our um, oil. But it wasn't passing out through the radiator itself. It was passing out through the, these EGR uh, yeah. gas. The new systems use the DEF fluid, so they don't. It doesn't and it works. A totally different. That was surprisingly one of the savings that was touted to us in writing back five years ago. That hey, you won't have to buy that fluid, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, since we pulled the other article for further work, why don't we pull this one and okay. work them together? So that we end up with a, a total solution. And then I can get back to, I mean, the, just for your information, the one ton was the one ton that we ejected from the fleet last year um, that we didn't get replaced. Um, it's one of our paving vehicles. Okay. So we'll hold off on 24 as it's written. 20